Hey guys, uh, this is Nick here from Kovacki Tutorials coming today to show you the basics of the compilation process and I'll do all kinds of tutorials in the computer science, physics, math, chemistry or just anything you guys want to learn uh, I'll do it, it's no problem uh, I'll, I'll try to go in order uh, starting with some simple stuff and then I'll try to build on it like today I'll do compilation then I'll send you how to show how to set up a compiler with an ID and then basically start some basic coding and do things like that um, I'll do some uh, C++ and Java or C Perl whatever language you guys want to learn that's uh, it's not gonna be a problem just um, request it and uh, I'll do it so okay so let's get started I'll do the basic uh, path of a C++ program because you say most beginners they start to they start to write code but they don't really know what's going on with their code so that's what I want to show you guys so you're gonna start with some code which uh, you're gonna type and I'll show you what some basic codes are in in a few other videos but that's what you start with and then you run it for a program called a uh, compiler and uh, there are many compilers out there you can get for free or paid I wouldn't recommend getting a paid ones because, well, the free ones are just as good. And um, the ones I'll be using, I'll be using the Microsoft Visual Studio Compiler, MSVS for short. But there's other ones you can get. The Express version of the Microsoft Visual Studio one is is uh, free. Uh, the one I'll be using is technically paid, but well, you guys know what you do. Uh, so there's also other ones like uh, MinGL. Uh, which is just a port of a, of a GNU GCC compiler which is a Linux compiler so uh, MinGL is just a Windows port of that but anyway once you have the code and once it runs through the compiler what the compiler is going to do is going to check for errors in your code like syntax errors or logic flow errors and with syntax errors you're usually going to get an error and the compiler is going to say no stop you can't do that because the language doesn't allow you to do it but with a logic flow error, it's going to be a little trickier. The compiler usually spits out a, a warning just telling you something doesn't look right. But the program will still run, but most likely it work incorrectly or will crash. You'll get a, uh, some type of uh, memory leak or something like that. Uh, so you want to fix those warnings most of the time. Sometimes they're dumb warnings like this file is old or things like that, which you don't need to worry about. So you run your code through a compiler and it produces something called object code which is just basic machine code it just lumps all your code together and then produces this object code which is again just simple well not simple but machine code that you can't really read uh, but the computer can and um, then this object code is passed through something called a linker and this linker it uh, takes uh, all the object code and links it to anything in the standard library which is just which is code that's already been written for you. For example, Microsoft has already written a bunch of code that you can use. And that code it can be in the form of the C++ standard library or it can be in the form of the of the Win32 library and many other form many other uh, code written like that that you can just uh, use that's already been done for you. And that's what the linker does. It just takes any references to other code and basically just kind of copy pastes it into your code. And puts uh, puts the program into one, and that kind of works with an assembler, which uh, basically takes all that code, and uh, and just produces again machine code that can be sent to your processor, and that code is generally in the form of an exe on Windows or an elf file in Linux. And the L file can have many different extensions. It has s.o.so.l, whatever. But basically, this file is just a bunch of commands and memory addresses that your computer takes, sends to the processor. So you're going to have this file, your operating system, whether you're running Windows, I'm running Windows 7 here, but whatever you're running, the operating system is going to take that, it's going to send that to the processor which uh, then is going to do some calculations uh, or whatever you're going to do which uh, this is generally with uh, the processor can read assembly code but we can't really read it it can it can it can kind of interpret uh, what the what the machine code is but uh, I'll show you some examples of assembly code later too 
what the processor takes takes that code does whatever calculation it wants to do and then sends it back back to the operating system which is then going to display whatever program you want to say hello world the most basic program is just going to display your string or whatever you're doing so that's basically the life of the hello world program in uh, in C++ or C uh, most compiled languages are going to work that way now let's say you want to do Java things are going to change a little bit you're going to have to oh, let me get rid of all this because Java uses basically an intermediary between the operating system and your code which is called the uh, JRE or Java Runtime Environment uh, which all that does is it just takes takes whatever code has been compiled and uh, sends it sends it to the operating system and let me just show you a little more detail here so there again you're gonna start you're gonna start with some code and um, whatever you're gonna write Java code and that's usually done in classes and uh, it's because Java is fully object oriented and I'll talk about that too later as well but once you write that code it's gonna go through the Java compiler and the Java compiler is generally a little more sensitive than the, than the C++ compiler so this is uh, Java and there's two types of the Java compiler there's the official one that's made by Oracle um, used to be Sun they bought it out so now it's Oracle and there's a the open JDK which is a free compiler for Java and free development environment for Java um, I mean this one is free too, the standard one, but uh, they don't show you all the code, it's not open source. While the open JDK is open source, some, some people prefer that, it's mainly used on Linux, I haven't seen it on Windows too much, but you can use it. So again, it's going to go through a compiler, and you're going to, and uh, the, comp the Java compiler kind of works with its own linker, so I'm not going to write that step, uh, to basically link all, all your files to the, uh, the JDK code but there is that step too I'm not gonna show it here but that's then that's then go to the you're gonna produce something called class files and these class files are basically each of the uh, all of your code in something that's called bytecode which is uh, something that the JDK can read and then it can send the instructions to the pro to the operating system you've mainly probably seen jar files which are, which are which are just combinations of class files they're not jar files they're just they're just um, a combination they're not actual code files the code files are the class files and the jar files are just the combinations so but once all this bytecode from the class files that get sent to the JRE to the running environment and that's gonna send all the instructions to the operating system which in turn sends it to the processor and this is a very similar process it goes back and forth to the processor and then that goes back to the OS and the OS sends it back to the JRE which is going to display whatever you're doing say hello world or whatever program you're going to be running so that's the basic process of what happens and if you have some more questions just uh, feel free to ask me and uh, well that's it I hope you guys like it and I hope uh, you subscribe and uh, I'm looking forward to doing more tutorials uh, see you